Baudrillard's First Order, as said, is where images try to make a copy of the world. This is apparent within the online world we live in today, with societal standard of beauty becoming ever harder to achieve. We turn to editing photos to reach that standard. We have access to software like Photoshop and apps like Facetune that let us change our appearance or somebody else's appearance at a few mouse swipes and a few finger touches. It is easy to change our body and facial features to meet these standards. Next, we go on to Baudrillard's second order, and this is where images intentionally differ from or change the objects they represent. In the modern digital era, this can easily be translated to online identity theft. The internet knows everything about us, from Facebook that has an about you page, to Google, who saves our passwords and bank details automatically. It could be easy for any run of the mill hacker to steal everything from us and in fact, become us. Okay, what do we have here? Male, 21 British. Hmm, let's have a look then. Kean Teague Campbell Robinson. It's a bit of a dumb name, but I guess it will work. He was born in Lowestoft in Suffolk. Oh, his favourite animal is a Siberian Husky. Okay, well, that should be enough. Let's get started. Hey, I'd like to make an order for the box set of Fifty Shades of Grey, please. Early extended edition, please. Yeah, sure. I'll process that for you now. Oh, well, it looks like you just made an order half an hour ago for a new lawnmower. Would you like me to stick that on the same delivery for you? Uh, yeah, sure, go for it. Yo, what do you think you're doing with my new lawnmower? Who the hell are you? I'm Kean Robinson. I'm Kean Robinson. Um, sorry to interrupt, but I'm Kian Robinson, and I just got charged for a lawnmower and some DVDs. I don't even have a lawn, so I don't need a lawnmower. What about Fifth Shades Grey? My little sister likes it. Since when do you have a little sister? I must be losing my touch. God's sake. Leave! I really need to take those password hints more seriously. 
Now, on to Bordrard's third order. This is where images conceal the fact that there is no underlying reality. To represent this in the modern world, you will now see how deepfakes remove the concept of reality. This is where things get interesting. Imagine, we make a deepfake of Donald Trump declaring a nuclear strike on North Korea. Something like this could cause World War 3. That's why this software is still only available on the dark web. As to not to completely disrupt my Mac, I've compiled a montage of some of the realest deepfakes I could find. President Trump is a total and complete dipshit. Now, you see, I would never say these things, at least not in a public address, but someone else would. Someone like Jordan Peele. Deepfakes are still an anomaly to the general public. We have seen the use of this type of software in high budget productions such as the Fast and Furious 7 movie where they layered Paul Walker's face over that of his brothers, due to Paul Walker dying before the completion of the movie. However, this involved a visual effects department using 260 shots in total to create the incredible face mapping technology. This is something which took a long time to do. However, now with the release of Fake App, a tool which uses artificial intelligence to create deepfakes, it's easy to make someone look like somebody else in roughly 40 hours for a 3-5 to five minute video. Although FakeApp has great potential, it was initially released to serve the purpose of placing the faces of celebrities like Selena Gomez, Ariana Grande, Emma Watson, Katy Perry, Taylor Swift, Scarlett Johansson and many more on porn stars. If it is this easy to make anybody do anything, is that good? Or is it bad? We've entered a stage of hyper-reality online, where can we really believe anything that we see anymore? Has the internet reached, or nearly reached, what Baudrillard defines as the third sector of simulacra and simulation? Now, taking a quick look at Liarbird, a free mobile app, listen to this. Hey guys, I am from Lalstov. I have six Siberian Huskies and I don't really know what else to say, but thank you. It will be sunny today in California, if you can take a break from work and enjoy the nice weather. This is what 252 short recordings on my voice has managed to generate. Although it does not sound amazing, you can slightly hear the tone of my voice. Lyrebird is an app which allows you to generate your own vocal avatar. The more you record your voice, the better it will sound. Now, imagine if you were to record your voice enough that you managed to generate an avatar that sounded exactly like you, and then your account got hacked. This is a bit far-fetched, but merge out with fake app and someone could potentially make you say or do anything they wanted you to. Give it several more years or decades, I'm sure fake app will have a successor which allows you to take both someone's face and their voice while making it look completely real. Is that good? Or is it bad? Or potentially both? But the question I pose to you, 